Okay. Um, so our next speaker is Matthias Dillon from Mysore Botanic Garden, and his talk is called "On a Bicycle to Wikidata: Harmonising the Chaotic Universe of Natural History Collectors." Right. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm going to talk indeed about um, the European-funded bicycle project. So it's a bit different than the previous presentations in that it's more about the actual practicalities of certain kinds of annotations. And in this, uh, in this um, uh, presentation, it's going to be about natural history collectors and the work that's been done for a couple of years now on annotating these with uh, persistent identifiers. So let's see if this works. Right, yeah. So um, people in biodiversity collections have been always very important because they're the ones who actually do all of the work and who connect to all the different kinds of data systems, data types, and all together. But it's only for a couple of years that we've been trying to um, address the big mess that we've made for ourselves in a way of all the different kinds of people in, with their names in various different syntaxes, making for a whole big data around the world that is not very interoperable at this point. So one of the solutions for this that we found is to uh, annotate these people, not just by their names, to identify them by persistent identifiers. And in this figure, I can see from a publication that we made uh, last year, you can see that Wikidata and um, ORCID play a significant role in uh, promoting this. So ORCID coming from more of the literature side, but also being implemented more and more in our domain of natural history collections. And Wikidata as a sort of all around generic tool to address the problems that other infrastructures don't solve and also coming with a nice open interface. So this work has been done and been ongoing for a couple of years. If you've been at that big before, you probably have seen some presentations on this. Um, but in the bicycle project, what we wanted to, uh, want to look into is, so where are we at right now? Because we have done quite some things. So what has come out of that? And looking at some of the infrastructures, starting with GBIF, we can see that, yes, GBIF implemented uh, support for identifiers a couple of years ago, recorded by ID and identified by ID. And as it stands now, well, the data is a bit, a few months old, so it might have changed since then, but we have about 6.7 million specimens annotated with persistent identifiers. So this is specimens in the broad sense, this is just basis of record excluding all the observations, which is still the bulk of the TV records, but not the ones we're interested in. These annotations come from about 230 data sets, but it's, as we commonly see, there's a big head and a very, very long tail. So it's a few data sets that make up the bulk of these annotations, which is also a bit unfair, but some collections spread their data out to a couple of different data sets. But still, when we look through the data, we can find that it's the endeavors of a few high-profile um, enrichment projects that create this big group of annotations that we've come by right now. If we look into them a bit deeper, we find that um, it's not always that easy to work with these identifiers in an interoperable manner, because there's still various syntax differences in how they're put into the system. As you can see, I've listed some of the issues there. There's failing spaces, there's free text in the identifiers. Not all of them are persistent unique identifiers at all. Some of them are integers. So there's still some issues to resolve, but we've already come quite some way. However, when we look at other infrastructures, for instance, the very closely related Pionomia to GBIF, because Binomia effectively takes its data, recorded by IDs and identified by IDs and the strings themselves from GBIF, we can see that there's an order of magnitude more attributions in that system than we can find in GBIF. This speaks for, well, <laughs> the great performance of Binomia throughout all these years, but it also speaks for a bit of a problem because all of those things made in Binomia, a lot of them they're there, they're available to the various APIs. They're not available in GBIF, and they're not available in the source infrastructure that deliver data to GBIF. So we're still having a bit of a problem there. Um, finally, another infrastructure that we looked into is the uh, Botany Pilot, which came out of the um, some of the CTAF working groups through the past couple of years. So their data was aggregated from the collection portals themselves to the CTAF specimen identifier uh, specification. 
And here also we find that we have a few thousand people um, enriched and are linked to various specimens in a persistent way. The specimen number is also a few bit in the millions. It's a bit more tricky to find out because of the data format of the botany pilot. But here as well, we see a bit of a round tripping problem because these enrichments, they're in the botany pilot, they're in the collection portals. They're often not in GBIF because there's still a bit of a, a glitch in the pipeline between ABCD 3.0 and the GBIF data model. So we get still some round tripping problems and we'll get to that in a bit. But another advantage of looking into this, this assessment, this is analysis of all the results that we've been done in terms of enrichment is that we can look into What's the state of this information in Wikidata? So what can we actually do with Wikidata to promote this even further? And there's two interesting roads that we can take, which I've listed on this slide. So one is um, we can try to find out which identifiers in, in, in other infrastructures or which other Wikidata properties identify people in the Wikidata infrastructure that actually are more likely than the others to be in the business of collecting or identifying specimens. Because we know for a fact that the vast majority of the people in Wikidata have nothing to do with the things that we're going to discuss here all week because they're in completely different domains. So it makes sense if we want to match people into Wikidata and add identifiers to their name strings that we want to pre do some pre-filtering and find out people who are more likely than the others to have been involved with natural history collections. And looking at the admissions that we have actually already done, we can get so much more certainty on the queries that we can use to identify these records. And the second step is that by looking at these records, we can find which Wikidata properties we can systematically leverage to get more certainty on the matches that we make this way. So these are two of the outcomes that we can leverage to improve existing workflows, but also what we have been oh, too far um, been doing in the bicycle project is come up with a workflow of our own, well, actually two workflows. And the aim of these is to make it ideally as simple as possible to do automated enrichment. That means going from strings to the Wikidata IDs in an automated manner to tackle the low hanging fruit as much as possible. So at least those, the ones that are relatively easily um, to uh, enrich automatically can be addressed this way. And the more difficult cases can be done by um, human validators, human scribes, for instance, from Bionomia, who can do um, much more historical digging in a much more iterative process. And um, based on the analysis that I uh, discussed earlier, we came up with a set of 10 queries, Sparkle queries in Wikidata, which get which generate, uh, well, which retrieve a whole set of collectors, uh, of people who are likely or somewhat possibly to be collectors. And a very interesting property in this regard is collection items add which has only been live for a couple of years now, I think. It hasn't been used that prominently yet. It's been used by some of the um, Bionomia volunteers, as you can see in that, in, in that uh, screenshot from Wikidata. But what we can do now, when we have the ex explicit links that have already been made and we identify them, we can import those into Wikidata by using the collection items add property. And this way, we can get a lot of people in Wikidata for which we know for a fact, 100% sure, that they have been in the business of collecting because they are directly connected to at least one specimen. Damn. <laughs> um, okay, so then I'm going to skip over this slide a bit more quickly. So there's various approaches um, to the matching process that we could take. Um, that's the difference between the two workflows. There's also some name parsing being done and David Shorthouse from Bionomia did a lot of work on this. So for the workflows we just well, just we reused what he has already produced to the past and we gave some feedback um, to improve the parser. But more importantly, what I want to spend the last two minutes on then is round tripping, the topic of this session, where we identified some problems before. And one of the ways, or one of the reasons why we think that has been the case is still the problem of standards. And so our answer to that was to promote as well, to uh, implement as many different standards as we could that support um, exporting these annotations and ideally ingesting them into different systems uh, after that, after the fact. So the first one um, is Darwin Core. Darwin Core is still a very prominent one, but still only poorly supporting um, identifiers for people and in particular the metadata related to those identifiers. As you can see on the slide, there's a breakdown of members of, 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 of teams of collectors. There's um, 
putting in annotations um, with not all of them certain uh, high certainty, so different scores for them, and then maintaining some level of permanence for the matching process. So in this, for this reason, we um, briefed some life again uh, into the kind of staled um, Darwin Core Agent Attribution Extension, which you can see the link there for the GitHub repo. But there was quite some development in 2020, but it has stalled since then. So this is a way to produce, uh, to export this data into a very Darwin Core compatible format. Secondly, it's the disco annotation model, which some of you may have seen the presentation by uh, Wouter uh, yesterday in the AI session. So that's currently under review, but it supports many of the same things that I listed above for the Darwin Core agent attribution, and has the added advantage that it will be integrated into the whole disco infrastructure, and you can take advantage of some downstream pipelines that Disco uh, infrastructure will also implement, such as easier round tripping back into the collection management systems. Okay, just one final thing. Uh, it's the third one and the most immediately usable way of round tripping is quick statements, or specifically it's adding the data, the enrichments directly into Wikidata. We can't add all the specimens, we can't add links to all the specimens, but like I said earlier, we can at least add links to some of the specimens and in this way directly label some of the persons as collectors, or if we add some more properties, possibly determiners as well. And to make put this into practice, as part of this little project, we took all the Wikidata items that we could find in the botany pilot and put them, or well, the links at least, to the people in Wikidata so that the collection items have property is much more useful at this point. Okay, and some acknowledgements, and because it is rather technical talk, I just put a picture of an org doing an org ID, um, <laughs> generate using DALL-E, all right. Thank you. Okay.